shamisen. This is actually one of my favorite Japanese instruments. Now, that's a very biased opinion because it's also my sweetheart and it's an instrument I've been playing the longest and the most intensely, but this is a great instrument. Um, it comes to Japan actually quite late versus other Japanese traditional instruments. It doesn't come to the end of 1500s, 1600s, um, and it comes to Osaka from a trading ship and right away it gets traded from merchant to merchant and it becomes an instrument of the people. So unlike our koto, unlike our shakuhachi, which both have roots in the court system, has roots with nobility, with the emperor himself, as well as with religion, shamisen, the shamisen we know today in Japan, in main island Japan, this is very different than Okinawa, really only has its roots with local people. Now later it did get itself into the temple, it did get itself part, you know, part of the higher class. It's not that it always stay there, but its roots really just start as an instrument for the people, by the people. Which makes it a really unique, kind of fun, snazzy instrument. So let's look at the shamisen as it is. So as you can see, the shamisen is actually made up of three pieces, which you can't see here. We have the neck, which actually can be divided in half. We have another neck piece, and then we have the body itself, what we call the do in Japanese. Three strings, three pegs, and all the strings are connected to the very bottom of the do, or the body of the shamisen, which interestingly enough, um, if I loosen my strings, this can be taken off. And then the shamisen is really easy to travel with, and then we just put it back on. So the shamisen, in a lot of ways, is a very simple instrument. However, there is something really unique about the shamisen, and that is the three strings. So, so what's unique about these strings? Well, it's not just three strings at three different thicknesses, so we have a lower pitch and a higher pitch. The three strings are created to sound different. Furthermore, they're put on the shamisen to sound different. So let's look at the very top of the shamisen together. So as I put these three strings on, let's start with string number three. The thinnest and the smallest string is actually our string number three. So string number three, you can see, is very thin. It's actually incredibly smooth, and it's placed on what we call the upper bridge, or the kamikoma, um, on the shamisen. Then we have the second string, or middle string. Um, this string, unlike the third string, is a little bit thicker. It is also fairly textured. Can you hear that? It has a texture to it, so it's not nearly as smooth. But once again, just like the third string, the second string is also put on the kami koma or the upper bridge. However, then we get to our thickest string, which is also slightly textured again. It's not smooth. If I do that to the third string, no sound. Only the first string, the thickest, the thickest of all the strings, is not placed on top of this upper bridge. It is actually placed in this little groove. Now you might be noticing there's tape right now on my shamisen, and that is actually because my groove is a little bit too groovy. <laughs> it's a little bit too deep. So I actually put just a little bit of tape in there to raise it up. But if you look really closely, there is actually a carving in the wood that grooves down, and that's what this third string, it actually goes into this little groove. So it doesn't actually sit on this upper bridge like the other two strings. Why would they do that? Well, this is how we get the very distinctive buzzing effect of the shamisen, which in Japanese we call sawaii. Because it's not in the upper bridge, this cuts off the vibration and it results in the shamisen vibrating in three locations. All right, so let's look at the shamisen again from above. So because this first string is not on the upper bridge, this results in the string vibrating in three different locations. It vibrates from the upper peg to where it touches 
the neck of the shamisen. It vibrates from the neck of the shamisen all the way down to the bottom bridge. And it also vibrates from the neck of the bridge to the bottom. So we have three locations and they fight with each other. That is how we create this buzz sound. Let's listen to that again. And so you have that slight little buzz, that kind of sound happening within the ringing of the shamisen. This is the same technique used for the Indian sitar to create a buzzing sound. The difference is shamisen only does it to the first string. Because the second and third string are on this upper bridge, they don't have that same buzzing effect that the first string has. So we have this kind of buzzing, and then we have the second string and the third string. Now, let's take this part even a little bit further. Because the second string is textured, as we saw, the second string is a little bit more of a muted sound. So we have the first string, which has a lot of life because of that buzz. Then we have the second string, which doesn't have nearly as a buzz, though it does get a little bit of a buzzing influence from the first string. They do influence each other. And then the third string, which is very bright. Now, if we take this first string and take it out of the groove and put it up, not actually on top of the upper bridge, but right next to it, but it's no longer in the groove, it actually takes away a lot of life of the shamisen altogether. So then we get this sound. No buzz. If we put it back into the groove, buzz. Let's play a game. So I want to play the shamisen string game. So what this game is, is I want you to listen to my rendition of Sakura Sakura. Now for those of you who do not know the piece Sakura um, in Japan, I'm a little bit sad. You should know this piece. It's a pretty standard children's traditional song. But basically the melody goes like this. simple, cute, sad melody. It is basically about the beautiful sakura petals and how their beauty is fleeting and will eventually die. A very, very Japanese type of thing. So for our game, I'm going to use the same melody, but purposely play it on different strings of the shamisen. So I want you to listen, use your ears, and for each section, I want you to tell me which string I'm playing on. There are going to be 20 places where you need to guess what the strings are. So please listen um, and you can watch. I will label each section on this video itself. Let's see how well your ears are compared to the different sounds of the strings. So here we go. So a little intro and then I'll go into the main theme. Bye. 
All right, let's go through it one more time. And this time, let's reveal what the strings actually are. So starting at the beginning with the intro. So hopefully you're starting to realize how different the color of each string is and how that overall changes the mood or the feeling of a particular piece. For example, if we just take this opening theme, sa, ku, ra, which generally, um, typically, traditionally is played on the third string, which once again is our highest, thinnest pitch, um, all mostly open with one finger down. One, which has this really kind of bright, maybe slightly painful, um, a little bit harsh color. But if you compare that to the same pitch, but on the second string, and I know I'm adding a little slide in there, but it's so tempting because it's something I cannot do on the third string. The third string is mostly open, so all I can do is, but then the second string, which has this kind of sadder, a little bit more muted color, I can add a little slide. Or I could play clean. Which also has its own color. That note. That note tends to have really good buzz to it. Or we could play it on the first string. Uh, which is our lowest and our fattest string, and we hear this with the same pitch. Which I could try to add the slide again, but it just doesn't have the same effect because the string doesn't resonate the same. And it has a really dead, very unharmonic type of sound. Um, and this is throughout the whole thing. On the third string, on the second string, so as you can hear, depending on which string I'm playing on, it's not about what the pitch is, it's about the color, the timbre of that particular pitch. And Shamisen was built for this. Shamisen excels at expressing music through different timbres, different colors, different expression, more than different pitches or chords or harmonies or melody. It really likes to express music through colors. And that's really what makes the instrument interesting.